You almost certainly have a whole bunch of these sensors in your collection. Here we've got the DHT11s, DHT22s, the BMP280, and the Dallas 18B20. Usually not on these little boards. But why haven't you made any projects with them? Well, maybe if it's like me, it's because the libraries for these things only come with the actual sensor handling. They don't have any sort of display or circuit or anything like that. So I've gone ahead and done the hard part for you. I have written code for each one of these sensors to display on an OLED screen. And on top of that, I have designed a PCB to make it all neat and tidy. Thanks to today's sponsor, PCBWay. All you need for this is an RP2040 Zero or one of the ESP32 Zero variants, this PCB, and my code, and you'll be off to the races. Let's take a look at these PCBs and I'll show you the features. For features, we've got every single pad broken out of the Zero except for the bottom row because I actually removed the copper here so that you can use a wireless device if you really want to. I also broke out all of the pads here so you can put your own pull-up resistors if your sensors don't have them already included. I also added the ability to use the microcontroller's built-in 3.3 volt regulator or to use this external regulator here, which is an AMS1117. There are pads for your I2C OLED and pads for each and every sensor, meaning you can run any sensor you want or all of them. The choice is yours. And of course, another major factor is that it shares the same form factor with my I2C scanner. I just added some vent holes so that you can add your sensor actually to the back of this PCB and have this sit on your workbench, just like so, sampling your environment. So to assemble it, it's pretty simple. You put your RP2040 on the back. You can put headers if you want. There's lots of room in the case for that. And I just put a little bit of a harness here for the OLED just solder directly onto the pads. You don't need to use the case if you don't want to, but it's available for you if you do. So there's a little harness, and then I have a little mid case to go on there. And then I have the OLED holder to go on here. And now you can thread in your screws. These are M3 by 10. You don't quite need 10 millimeters of length. And then the top ones go through the OLED holder. If you have troubles with this part, uh, it's recommended to just ream them out a little bit. Go either go through and screw them in and out a couple times or uh, simply use a drill bit to make the hole a little bit bigger. Or if your 3D printer tolerances are good, this could just work out for you. just like that. And then for your OLED, you connect it. The wiring is already written on the OLED. And the longer your wires, the easier it is to plug in, but the harder it is to shove everything in there once it's all done. And then I have these little M2 screws. I think these are M2 by six. They don't need to be very long because the housing is very small. And these are self tappers, so be gentle, use your brain. And there we go. Now, keep in mind that it is a lot easier to program this thing before you put it in the box because you need to hit the boot button, but shouldn't be a problem for me because I already have a little bit of demo code on here. So I've got my BMP280 sensor here on flying leads. Don't forget, you can easily attach it to the bottom side of the board and have it hidden in there. But I like this as a little test bed. So I'm just going to plug in the USB here and it should pick up automatically. Yep, there we go. So under my bright lights here, um, the temperature is 23.5 Celsius and the pressure is 998 hectopascals. I'm just going to... Uh, heat up my sensor here with my warm hands. As you can see, it responds. And if you let go, it should drop. And there it goes. And so I've got code working for all of the sensors. 
And the bonus part is you can get it on GitHub, but you can also just go to my website linked below and get all this code to copy and paste. So I hope it should be self-explanatory where you can go in and modify the code to display it the way you want to display it. But I've made just a basic start that you can use an I2C OLED and any of the temperature sensors you want, and it should work for you. If you're interested in this project, go down to the link in the description, go to PCB Way, order yourself some PCBs because they make these projects possible and you supporting them allows them to support me. Thanks for watching. Because I just need room for the screws, although I don't like this ridiculous angle. But it is what it is. We... We will press on. Mmm. Microplastics in the morning. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope that's not how the stream's going to go.